वैष्णव घोषुनाखोरो वैष्णव घोषा पति पवन थोम बिन खे हो न पति पवन थोम बिन खे हो न हरा खाते चले पापी धोरे पान खाते चले पापा दूर जाया प्रभु खेता जा मना दयाल प्रभु खे बुखो था जा गंगरा परा से होले फास जोरे पा ते दर्शन पवित्र खोरो दर्शने पवित्र खोर हो हे तुम्हारा गो हरिस्तान आप रे हरे नारिस्तान 
लागिया पराधी हरे हरे नमस्ताने आपराधी नहीं फारत रास्ताने आपराधी नहीं फारत Purify the fallen souls. Yeah. Can you give me the Chung Man Shi? 
喺呢度，除咗你，係冇人淨能夠淨化啲墮落嘅靈魂。Where does anyone find such a merciful personality by whose mere audience all sins go far away？ 喺邊度揾？除咗一個咁仁慈嘅人物，只係透過僅僅見到佢，已經可以將所有嘅罪清洗。After bathing in the waters of the sacred Ganges many times, one becomes purified. But just by the sight of you, the fallen souls are purified. This is your great power. Hmm. 靠見到你墮落嘅靈魂，就得到立刻得到淨化。呢個就係你巨大力量啲所在。The holy name delivers one who has committed an offence to Lord Hari. But if one commits an offence to you, there is no means of deliverance. 聖名拯救冒犯主 Hari 嘅人，但係人如果冒犯你，就無法得到拯救。Your heart is always the resting place of Lord Govinda, and Lord Govinda said the Vaishnavas are in my heart. Your heart is always the resting place of Lord Govinda, and Lord Govinda said the Vaishnavas are in my heart. Your heart is always the resting place of Lord Govinda, and Lord Govinda said the Vaishnavas are in my heart. Your heart is always the resting place of Lord Govinda, and Lord Govinda said the Vaishnavas are in my heart. Your heart is always the resting place of Lord Govinda, and Lord Govinda said the Vaishnavas are in my heart. Your heart is always the resting place of Lord Govinda, and Lord Govinda said the Vaishnavas are in my heart. 我希望我將會經歷嘅每一生，都能得到你聖足上嘅塵土。請把那個他乜都視為己出，仁慈待他。在，在，他們都係他所起。在。Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya。Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya。Gavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskritam. Narayanam <laughs> Shloki, Bhagavati Uttama Shloki, Bhakti Bhavati Naistaki, Bhakti Bhavati Naistaki. We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto One, Chapter Three. Krishna is the source of all incarnations. Text number ten. 我哋读圣典博加眼堂第一篇第三章，题子系圣 Krishna 系所有发生嘅源头，第十。Panchama kapilo namha. Panchama kapilo namha. Panchama kapilo namha. Panchama kapilo namha. Sadesha kala. Viplav tam, viputam. Siddhesa kala viputam. Siddhesa kala viputam. Siddhesa kala viputam. Provacha sara ari sankhyam. Provacha sara ye sankhyam. Provacha sara ari sankhyam. Pauvacha Shivaya Satikam Tadvagrama Vinirnayam Tadvagrama Vinirnayam 
Tatvagramavininayam Tatvagramavininayam Panchama Kapilo Namha Panchama Kapilo Namha Sadesha Kala Viplutam Sadesha Kala Viplutam Provacha Sarai Sankhyam Tadvagrama Venirnayam Tadvagrama Venirnayam Panchama Kapilo Namha Panchama Kapilo Namha Sadesha Kalavitlutam Sadesha Kalavitlutam Prova Cha Sarai Sankhyam Prova Cha Sarai Sankhyam Tadva Grama Venirnayam Tadva Grama Venirnayam Okay Manchanam kapilo nama Manchamana kapilo nama Sidesha kalevi pitatam Sidesha kalevi pitatam Vachacha sutaya sankhyam Pauvacha shuraye sankhyam Tattva ganam vipuritam Tattva grama vininayam Panchama Kapilo Namma Panchama Kapilo Mamma Siddhesa Kalavi Putam Siddhesa Kalavi Putam Pauvacha Surayi Sankhyam Provacha Surayi Sankhyam Tadva Grama Vininayam Tadva Grama Vininayam Panchama Kapilo Nama Siddhesha Kalaviputam Pravacha Sarai Sankhyam Tadva Grama Vinayam Panchama. Panchama. The fifth one. The fifth one. Kapila. 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 Nama. Nama. Of the name. Of the name. Sadesha. Sadesha. The foremost among the perfect. The foremost among the perfect. Kala. Kala. Time. Time. Viplutam. Viplutam. Last. Last. Sathoi. Last, is it? Lost. 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 Yeah. Lost. Sathoi. Ravacha. Ovacha. Said. 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 Asuraye. Asuraye. Unto the Brahmanas. Unto the Brahmanas. Named Asuri. Named Asuri. Mingwai Asuri. The Brahmana. Sankhyam. Sankhyam. Metaphysics. Yin Yi Sang Ho. Tadva Grama. Tadva Grama. The sum total of the creative elements. The sum total of the creative elements. Chang Zhou Yun Su Di Zhong Wo. Vini Na Yam. Vini Ma Yam. Exposition. Xuat Ming. Translation. The fifth incarnation. Named Lord Kapila is foremost among perfected beings. He gave an explanation of the creative elements and metaphysics to Asuri Brahmana. For in course of time, this knowledge has been lost. Had had been lost. Yit man, meaning that Lord Kapila's fifth incarnation is the foremost among perfected beings. He gave an explanation of the creative elements and metaphysics to Asuri Brahmana. For in course of time, this knowledge has been lost. Had had been lost. The sum total of the creative elements is 24 in all. Each and every one of them is explicitly explained in the system of Sankhya philosophy. 
Sankhya philosophy is generally called metaphysics by the European scholars. The etymological meaning of Sankhya is that which explains very lucidly by analysis of the material elements. This was done for the first time by Lord Kapila, who is said herein to be the fifth in the line of incarnations. Sankhya 他在这个狮子之中被说成是第五位化身。I'm not sure which Kapila is being described here. And with Om Omagyana Timurandasya, Yana Jana Shalakaya, Militanina, Tasmai Shri Gorave Nama. Vancha kaupata rubyascha, kripa sindhu vaivacha, patita nam pavane bio vaishnavibyo namo namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda, Sri Advaita Gadadha, Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhattavanda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So there are, there are two Kapilas. There is one who is the son of Devahuti and the other Kapila is the atheist Kapila. The other one is the atheist. They both present Sankhya philosophy, but they pre present it in a different manner. But we cannot. Uh, and they present the philosophy in different ways. So, in this third canto, at the end of the third canto, you have the description of Lord Kapila, who is the son of Devahuti. And Lord Kapila appeared in the Sankhya, in the Satya Yuga, and he presented the knowledge of Sankhya with the with the understanding that there's a Supreme God. He presented the theory of Sankhya, which is the analysis, analysis of the elements of material creation. And he combined it with meditation can combine it with meditation on the super soul. Now here in this particular verse they don't mention anything about which Kapila is being Is it? Yeah. But we, there's nothing about an Asuri Brahmana in the third canto. This is just the description then mm -hmm. we'll go further. Huh? Just the description of the Nautaras? It's just a description of uh, different avatars. Uh, this one is uh, the uh, uh, son. Yeah. In fact, this chapter is just um, he talks about the people who are talking about the Sankhya, so the Jihad. Brahma's grandson. Yeah, there'd be no reason. Of course. Because he's described as an incarnation, the other Kapila is not an incarnation. Yes. Mm -hmm. But he, the, the other Kapila is famous. 
So Lord Kapila spoke this Sankhya philosophy to his mother. His mother Devahuti was feeling troubled by material life. Devahuti was, a, was one of three daughters of Swayambhuvamanu. Um, mm, there were three daughters. It was Devahuti, Prachuti and Akuti. Akuti. Devahuti, mm. Akuti and Prachuti. Mm, there were all, and there were two sons. Just of, right? uh, Priyavata. And Uttanapada. Swayambhuvamana has five children. So Devahuti was uh, given in marriage to a great sage, Devahuti in Kadama Muni. She was married to Kadama Muni. So Devahuti is given to Muni, Muni is Kadama. Kadama. Kardama. 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 Yeah, Kardama had been practicing yoga for 10,000 years, living in the forest. Such a yoga people live a life of about 100,000 years. So Kardama Muni had been living in the, in the forest doing meditation, practicing yoga. And then the Lord appeared to him and told him that in a few days there's a young girl, a young woman coming here, she will make a nice wife for you. So Swambhuvamanu came, brought his daughter there into the forest and presented her to Kadama Muni. And the two of them lived there in the forest. And then at some point Devahuti desired to have a family. And so Kadama Muni created an aerial mansion. <coughs> and they went flying in their aerial mansion and they visit, visited Mount Meru and different places where the demigods go to enjoy. All the demigods? They went traveling in the aeroplane. Uh -huh. And they went to places where the demigods go. <coughs> and in this way they enjoyed life together. <coughs> and then Devahuti gave birth. <coughs> she had nine daughters and one son. The nine daughters were all given in marriage to great sages. And the son was the incarnation of God, Lord Kapila. So then after Kardama Muni saw that his wife had a family, then he decided that he thought it's time to leave home. He didn't want to stay at home with his wife. He thought it, it's, it's time to renounce. He thought, I've done my duty now, now I want to renounce. So Devahuti was left in the care of her son. Right, a woman, when they're young, take, a young woman's taken care of by her father. When she gets married, she's taken care of by her husband. 
and in old age she should be taken care of by her son. So Devahuti came to her son Lord Kapila and she, she knew that her son was an incarnation of God. She knew because Lord Brahma had told her that you're going to have a child, a son, who is an incarnation of God. Well, she was already born in a very important family. Devahuti was born in the family of Swambhuva Manu. Manu is also an incarnation of God. Anyway, uh, Devahuti come, came before her son, Lord Kapila, and asked him to help her, to guide her out of her ignorance. So Devahuti came to the Lord's face and asked him to help her. Be she was in ignorance because she was attached to her husband. So Lord Kabila told her that you have to change the attachment from the material to the spiritual. So Kabila and, and he taught her the process of becoming attached to spiritual things. He taught her the system. They taught her the system of Sankhya Yoga. Sankhya. Analyzing all the elements of the material creation. So Sankhya Yoga is common metaphysics. It's people, the scientists, materialistic scientists, they like to present things in a technical manner, like metaphysics. So this Sankhya is a kind so Lord Kapila explained the elements of the material creation. He explained the, how 24 elements are there. There are five gross elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether. <coughs> And then there are uh, the five sense objects. Meaning tasting, touching, seeing, smelling, and. Tasting, touching, seeing, smelling. Uh, the, on, oh, oh, tasting, yeah, we had tasting, uh, touching, skin, smelling the nose, seeing the eyes, and hmm? taste. Taste, yeah. we had that. Uh -huh. anyway, anyway, there, there are the five sense objects, uh -huh. and there are, five, uh -huh. there are the five working senses. Uh -huh. Working senses mean the eyes, uh -huh. the ears, uh -huh. the nose, uh -huh. the, the tongue, uh -huh. and the skin. Uh -huh. right? These are the five working these are the five knowledge acquiring senses. And then there's five working senses. The working, the working senses are the tongue, the arms, the legs, and then the creative organ for evacuating and for creating. 
my Sangje Heku. So the, these are the five working senses. So you have five knowledge acquiring senses, five working senses, and then five sense objects, five elements. Very complicated. There's twenty. And then you have three subtle elements, you have the mind, intelligence, ego. And the twenty-fourth element is the Pradhan. The Pradhan, the unmanifested. So twenty-four elements in the material creation. And Lord Kapila explains everything about these different elements. So Kapila Right. Because the word Sankhya means that which explains very lucidly by analysis of the material elements. So, so Lord Kapila, he uh, taught his mother, and then after he taught his mother, then he left home. Oh. Yeah, because his mother had already, he taught his mother, his mother had all realized everything. So Lord Kapila had no reason to stay at home. So Lord And so he travelled around and then he came and he made his ashram at Ganga Saga. Ganga Saga. Ganga Saga. Yeah, if you go there, it's at Sundarban. I had the opportunity to go there. <laughs> they, they, they say, if you go there, you only go one time. <laughs> you won't want to go again. <laughs> it's so remote, you know. Right <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to go right to the end of the Sundarbans. And often it floods also. They get floods there a lot. They, we have an Iskon temple. They're trying to build it, and it was a big building for some time. The one man who was building it died, and so the man had to collect money, I'd go and find somebody else to get money to finish it. The one man died without finishing it. <laughs> but nice to go there. It's just a holy place of pilgrimage. So Lord Kapila's his deity is there. That they have a deity of Lord Kapila. Yeah. We always show Lord Kapila as a young boy, but there they've got Lord Kapila. He's got a big beard. Kapila, Ganga Saga. You have to go to Calcutta, and then from Calcutta you go south. You go south to the, to the where the Ganga goes into the sea. You won't yeah. want to go too remote. <laughs> it's quite a remote place. We had to travel in the bus for quite a few hours to get there from Calcutta. But it's a holy place. You can see there's the Ganga and the sea, you know, so you've got the Ganga flowing into the sea. There's a lot of sadhus there. So, Lord Kapila is this, uh, he's teaching this one branch of the Vedic knowledge, the Sankhya is one of the Six darshans, which is described in the Vedic literatures. <coughs> there are six prominent different philo philosophical systems. Right. right. Patanjali taught yoga. Yoga, yoga. And Gautama taught logic. Oh, and then you've got uh, 
Kapila teaching this Sankhya and then you've mm. got also the um, Karma Mimamsa from Jaimini mm. and you've got the Astavakra dot impersonalism and Srila Vyasadev taught the Vedanta. So, so these are the six different philosophical systems. And Lord Kapila is giving us this one system here. So the principle of Sankhya philosophy is to analyze all these different elements. And the idea is that by analyzing all the different elements, then you come to understand the Supreme Lord behind all of them. All right, the, this is the, 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 the system that you want to understand where is where is the Supreme Lord? You have to analyze. So you search by analysis, you come to understand who is behind all of these different elements. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes the elements of the material nature. Bumerapo nalovayu kamano buddhirevacha ahankara itiyame bina prakrite ashtada. He says, These are my separated material elements. It's separated energy from Krishna. Right, there's, Krish, there's different kinds of prakriti. There's para prakriti and apara prakriti. What apara? Two, two kinds of prakriti. Material nature is prakriti. But there's two kinds of the living entities, they are the superior prakriti. The material elements don't matter. The earth, water, fire, the stone, marble, wood, all of these things, these are these are the inferior they have no consciousness. They have dull matter has no consciousness. But there's another prakriti, which are the living entities. And the living entities, they are superior prakriti. They are para prakriti, the superior prakriti. They're superior because they have consciousness. Right? Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Apariyami tastvanyam prakritim vidime param jiva bhuta mahabaho yeidam daryate jagat. Besides this, Lord Krishna had just described the eight elements, the gross elements. He said, Besides this, there's another prakriti of mind which are the living entities. Jiva Bhuta Mahabaho Yeidam Daryate Jagat. They are trying to exploit the resources of the material world. Right? And because of that, they are having so much trouble. Mami Vamsa Jiva Loke, Jiva Buddha, Sanatana, Manas Shastani Indriyani, Prakriti Stani Karshati, struggling with the Prakriti. This is the meaning of the Prakriti, which is the meaning of the Prakriti. 
We're, we're struggling with karsati, prakriti stani karsati. We're getting so many troubles because we are trying to exploit the material nature. Now Lord Kapila, he's teaching this system of Sankhya. It's meant to bring us to surrender. It bring us to devotion. But after many births and deaths, one who is actually knowledge will surrender. So it's a it's a good idea to surrender to Krishna. But, but it's very rare that people surrender to Krishna. But the goal of knowledge is that we should surrender. So Lord Kapila, he was teaching his mother about this Sankhya philosophy. He taught her to analyze all the different elements of material creation. You can read third canto, chapter 26 of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And you get an elaborate step by step information of all the different elements of the material creation. And behind everything is the Supreme Lord. And we are meant to meditate on that one Supreme Lord. So Lord, Ka Lord Kapila didn't only just teach to analyze the elements of the creation, but he taught to focus our mind and concentrate on the Supreme Lord. So Lord Kapila, he is the great personality is described here as what the perfect beings, foremost among perfected beings. He was, al he was already perfect when he appeared. He doesn't have to become perfect. He was already perfect. And so he was able to teach the Sankhya philosophy. And by, te by teaching the Sankhya philosophy, he was showing everyone the path how to become perfect. And he describes also a lot of things about devotional service. He describes how people may do devotional service, but it can be in the modes of nature. Hmm. People can be doing devotional service. It can be in the mode of ignorance. It can be in the mode of passion. It can be in the mode of... But what we want is pure devotion. Devotion which is not influenced by the modes of nature. Where there's pure devotion, then you get the goal of life. But where devotion is mixed by passion, rajaguna, tamagun, then that's not going to give you love of God, of course. So Lord Kapila he explained about the modes of nature and how it influences devotional service. 
，所以 Capilla 就透過描述分析呢個物質元素嘅創造咧。And he also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He also taught us to worship the deity with the proper mood. He If one is simply worshiping the deity but not respecting other people, then that is not good. 假如一個人仔係只係崇拜神像而去啊忽略其他唔尊重其他嘅生物體咧，咁係冇乜作用。So Lord Kapila gave a lot of important teachings. He also expressed about the glories of chanting the holy name. 所以 Kapila 教導好多呢啲奉愛嘅服務咧，同時咧係教導人。唱到主嘅性命嘅重要性。That the holy name can destroy unlimited amounts of sinful activities。因為性命可以誒摧毀所有嘅罪行罪惡。So we are we are very much indebted to Lord Kapila for his wonderful teachings。所以我哋好有好大嘅虧欠啊，對主 Kapila 嘅教導。I'm proud to have lectured on the third canto, chapter twenty-five. Those lectures were all published in the book the Teachings of Lord Kapila. So, chapter 25 is the chapter which describes Sankhya Yoga in relation to devotion. So, chapter 25 is the chapter which describes Sankhya Yoga in relation to devotion. So Lord Kapila, in his teachings, he covered all the aspects of this Sankhya philosophy. So Kapila, Lord Kapila, in his teachings, he covered all the aspects of this Sankhya philosophy. So Lord Kapila, in his teachings, he covered all the aspects of this Sankhya philosophy. So Lord Kapila, in his teachings, he covered all the aspects of this Sankhya philosophy. So Lord Kapila, in his teachings, he covered all the aspects of this Sankhya philosophy. And there's one important verse where Lord Kapila says that Satam Prasanga Mama Vir Samvido Pavanti Rikarana Rasayana Kata Just Joshe Nadjesha Pavarga Vatmani Shradara Tir Bhaktir and Anukramishyati Lord Kapila describes the topics of Lord Krishna When heard in the association of devotees, it's very pleasing to the ear and to the heart. 咁啊 ，Kapila 有一個好出名嘅詩節咧，就係講人應該從事於主嘅服務咧，喺奉獻者嘅聯誼之中，從而學習。So Lord Kapila was encouraging the practice of devotional service by speaking the Sankhya philosophy. 咁所以主題譬如咧，係以呢個蘇倫學咧嚟教導人從事奉獻服務而出著名嘅。He wanted everyone to become a devotee。希望所有人成為主嘅奉獻者。And he was he he was devotee. He he uh travelled around preaching this this. This knowledge. He wanted to make all people who were devotees to travel around the world to spread this knowledge. As it says here in this verse, it said, "Tum Tum 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 Yeah, in the Bhagavad Gita, described Lord Krishna is describing why he appeared in this world. 亦都係國家辦公嘅講述點解 Krishna 要誒降凡喺呢個物質世界。He describes first of all how the knowledge was given to the sun god Vishvan, and the sun god gave it to Manu, and Manu gave to Ikshvaku. 咁所以係博加凡哥 Krishna 係重新講述呢個呢一門知識咧，初初係由俾太陽神啦，跟住係俾誒佢嘅兒子 Iskula 咁樣一路傳流落嚟。But then, uh, he describes how 
the knowledge was given to the saintly kings, but in course of time it became lost. 本來呢啲知識都係傳俾啲國王，但係時間流轉咧，呢、这個知識已經失傳。Aparyamita svanyam prakritim jiva bhutama no evam parampara praptam imam raja shayo vidu sakalini hem mahata yoga nashta parantapa yoga nashta the knowledge was lost in course of time. This is just one time saying this. How do you think that time is lost? How do you think that time is lost? How do you think that time is lost? So that is the danger. And Prabhupada was very worried also about that. That in course of time, things would be changed. Prabhupada 亦都提到咧，喺時間流流轉嘅時候，好多嘢會消失嘅。Prabhupada said, "Don't change anything." 所以爸爸唔好改變任何事情。But change is inevitable. 但係好難避免嘅。Change, change will come, just like Lord Krishna established, spoke the Bhagavad Gita. So many different interpretations are there. So, like the Bhagavad Gita, there are many different interpretations. So, like the Bhagavad Gita, there are many different interpretations. So, like the Bhagavad Gita, there are many different interpretations. So, like the Bhagavad Gita, there are many different interpretations. So, like the Bhagavad Gita, there are many different interpretations. So, like the Bhagavad Gita, there are many different interpretations. So, like the Bhagavad Gita, there are many different interpretations. So, like the Bhagavad Gita, there are many different interpretations. So, like the Bhagavad Gita, there are many different interpretations. So, like the Bhagavad Gita, there are many different interpretations. So, like the Bhagavad Gita, there are many different interpretations. So, like the Bhagavad Gita, there are many different interpretations. So, like the Bhagavad Gita, there are many different interpretations. So, like the Bhagavad Gita, there are many different interpretations. Prabhupada also said six, nobody could do it. Prabhupada 知我哋做唔到噶啦。So Prabhupada had to reduce the number of rounds. 是，你哋练十六圈啦。And Prabhupada had also we had he had Brahmacharini's preaching. He had the like single ladies in the ashram, and they were going out for preaching. 啲爸爸亦都做一啲改改變咧，就係讓啲 Brahmacharini 啊，女星就真可以去傳教同埋喺廟堂收集。So, Prabhupada certainly made some changes from Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasa. But, course of time, the knowledge is lost. We, we have to be careful, try to preserve everything. There are supposed to be 108 Upanishads, but you can't find them today. 本來有一百個咩 Upanishad 啊嗰啲往世書，但係都維係唔到咁多啦。In Bhaktivinoda Thakur's time, which was just 200 years ago, he had great difficulty to get a copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita. 所以喺巴提，原來太古嘅年代，只係二百年前，亦都已經好困難嘅得到主隨他人經嘅《長寿三密塔》呢個書本。And it was only by some great fortune that he found the nectar of instruction. One day, when he was visiting a friend's home, he was looking at his friend's library, and he found this book. Wow! A book by Rupa Goswami. 咁好偶然之中咧，竟然好幸運喺啊啊佢個朋友嗰度睇，竟然發現到 Rupa Goswami 寫嘅《奉愛金露》啊，非常狂喜。So he immediately had it copied and he, and then he wrote commentary on it and he printed it. 佢立即佢抄咗個副本咧，然後跟住印刷。Just like Lord Chaitanya, he was travelling in South India and he came to the Adikeshwar Temple and he. He heard the brahmanas speaking something. They were discussing a scripture, and he found out they were discussing Brahma Samhita. And then he he got the Brahma Samhita. He saw it, and he said, "Oh, this book is wonderful." He said, "I must make a copy." So, if you see Chaitanya's ah Mahaprabhu 嘅例子咧，佢亦都系去到南印度咧，竟然发觉有啲人喺度读一个经典，就系 Brahma Samhita。Brahmasin， 佢就如獲至寶，立即要個副本跟住印刷傳開。And Lord Chaitanya brought the book and then he brought it back and he gave it to devotees there. He got copies made for other devotees. Chaitanya， 爸爸佢立刻將呢啲啊珍貴嘅。He gave Ramananda Rai a copy. Ramananda Rai 一個副本，一個。He gave Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya a copy. 一個 copy， 一個副本啦，每人一個，又將佢印刷傳開。Gave Gadadhar Pandit a copy. So all the devotees said, "Wow, this is wonderful." 所有奉獻者得到一個咁珍貴嘅。Rupa Goswami's book. Rupa Goswami 負責講述。So sometimes, you know. 
books go missing and only by good fortune they can be found again. So we don't want to lose the Vedic knowledge. We want to keep everyone in Krishna consciousness. Any question? So nice. How can you remember so very nice, Maharaj. Immediately, you Thank you for your invitation for Maharaj to come. Sankey is also not easy. Thank you, Maharaj, for teaching detailed explanation. So we can get Usually, Sankey philosophy, the only philosophy is the atheist one. They all know the atheist philosophy. Uh -huh. so, Sankey, uh, so long, uh, very much, uh, with no concept of God. And they say life came from matter. <laughs> we say life comes from life, but they say <laughs> life comes from matter. Hare Krishna. Sankhya is based on mental speculation. Well, we're meant to speculate on the Shastra, guided by Shastra. We're not meant to speculate just on the strength of our own mind, but it should be guided by Shastra. So, so speculation guided by Shastra, that kind of thing. In, in, in Bhagavad Gita, there is Sankhya Yoga, Karma Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. Yes, Sankhya Yoga is mentioned, but that Sankhya Yoga is a different from what is actually being described in Srimad Bhagavatam and what Lord Kapila described. That, that Sankhya in the Bhagavad Gita, that's a very basic thing. The, the, just distinguishing the, the body from the soul. Uh, Srila Prabhupada, in one of his lectures, I think in Germany, uh, he, he says uh, Sankhya and Karma Yoga, uh, like Bhakti Yoga is better than Sankhya Yoga and Karma Yoga. Yes, definitely. That's said in the Bhagavad Gita also. Bhakti is at the top of the yoga ladder. If Sankhya, if it's done properly, it will lead to Bhakti. Okay, Hare Krishna. Thank you. You have